Hello, my name is Angela Hoy, and I'll be presenting a marketing plan for Barnes & Noble. Think back to the last bookstore you were in. Recall the texture of the spines as you pulled books off the shelf, the rustle of the pages as you flipped through, the joy of meandering through the aisles and finally finding a hidden gem. The truth is humans are analog creatures. We prefer to process analog information and we prefer to use our senses to handle a product before we purchase it. Browsing for and reading a physical book gives us the experience that our brains evolved to process. However, the rise of e-commerce has threatened the existence of the brick and mortar bookstore in many ways, including price, variety, and quality. Brick and mortars are considered old fashioned and don't differentiate themselves enough to be considered over the convenience of shopping online. Barnes & Noble has been suffering from this sentiment in recent years. Early in its history, Barnes & Noble differentiated itself through book selling innovations like television advertising and publishing proprietary books. However, in recent years, the company has faced intense competition from online retailers who have been able to offer the same products cheaper and more conveniently. Barnes & Noble must focus on tooting its offline nature, namely the ability for customers to physically interact with not only products, but other humans during the shopping experience. The company must rebrand itself as having a neighborhood store feel while being agile and trendy at the same time. In other words, the key is emphasizing the book buying experience rather than products themselves. Barnes & Noble should no longer be seen as simply a warehouse for books, but an innovative trendy place where customers can go for a personalized shopping experience. And this is what my marketing plan seeks to do. But before we discuss the details, let's talk about the industry. Each year, 2.7 billion books are sold at over 10,000 bookstores in the U.S. Yet despite rising rates of disposable income, the fiercely competitive and mature retail book industry has been declining over the past five years at an annualized rate of 3.3% to $11.4 billion in revenue. This has primarily been due to the rise in e-commerce. The combination of the absence of differentiation from one specific title to another, as well as the ability to quickly compare prices in an extremely competitive marketplace has resulted in price sensitive consumers choosing to purchase print books online. In addition, the prevalence of online book reviews and the ability to crowdsource information about a book without physically handling it has turned an experience good into a search good. As such, convenience often becomes a driving factor for online sales with consumers having their books delivered with their clothes and other household items. Finally, the portability and convenience of eBooks have also shifted sales away from brick and mortars. Yet, some small independent bookstores have thrived, with many consumers still valuing the physicality of paper books and bookstore atmosphere over price. In addition, the market is still bullish on categories such as board books and graphic novels, whose visual attributes shine in stores. Barnes & Noble founded in 1886 the Fortune 1000 company and the bookseller with the largest number of retail outlets in the United States. Its strengths include superior brand awareness among consumers and a good track record of integrating complementary firms through both M&A as well as partnerships such as Starbucks. Over the years, the company has also built a strong supply and distribution network, able to overcome supply chain, bottlenecks, and deliver to a majority of its potential market. Yet its sales have been on the slide over the past 11 years from an abundance of competitors, including other brick and mortar bookstore chains, big box retailers, and e-commerce retailers. The competitor most similar to Barnes & Noble in the brick and mortar book selling industry is Book Pavilion, which operates over 250 stores in 31 states. Barnes & Noble favors keeping relatively high price points, but a more luxurious experience, while Books A Million offers significantly more discounts and promotions. 
The company has also seen external threats from general big box retailers like Walmart, Target, and Costco entering the book selling market. On the other end of the spectrum, independent bookstores also take market share from indie book fans. Finally, e-commerce retailers like Amazon have dealt a heavy blow to brick and mortar retailer sales due to their one-stop shop convenience factor and ability to present consumers with more pieces of information about the product, such as customer reviews at the point of sale. To compete in such a marketplace, as mentioned earlier, Barnes & Noble needs to revamp its image, and it needs a way to get customers to stores. One way of doing that is to implement trendy and creative pop-up kiosks. Barnes & Noble will place eye-catching branded kiosks in high-traffic areas and events to sell related merchandise while advertising the brand. For example, at movie theaters, the company can place displays featuring the novels for current movies. At professional sports games, they can sell books and toys about that sport and the teams that are playing. The goal while making sales from impulse buys is to first rebrand Barnes & Noble as an agile, trendy company that is always seeking to reinvent itself. The second goal is to remind the target population, those in their 20s and 30s, who grew up reading physical books but lately have been surrounded with electronic reading material, of the pleasure of physically handling books again. The marketing team must think out of the box with their design and attempt to make stands as quote unquote Instagrammable as possible to draw attention. To provide an example, at the Tennis US Open tournament, Barnes & Noble can have a kiosk featuring tennis related merchandise like books, calendars, and toys. The concept of the pop-up kiosk itself with its related items encourages multiple purchases. In addition, strategically and ad hoc utilitarian giveaways emblazoned with a Barnes & Noble trademark will be distributed to customers and passers-by at events. For example, at major summer sports events like the U.S. Open, Branded hand fans will be distributed with the goal of attendees using the product extensively during the event with opportunities for the brand to be captured on television as audiences are filmed. Barnes & Noble will advertise their participation in such events by posting photos of the stands and, if possible, staff together with famous figures from the event, like athletes or mascots on social media outlets like Instagram and Facebook. In addition, Barnes & Noble will seek to utilize its existing publishing house capabilities to partner with the events at which pop-up kiosks will be to create limited edition or licensed merchandise for the event. For example, for the U.S. Open, Barnes & Noble will collaborate with the USTA to create a special book featuring photos and information about the players competing that year, the venue, and statistics on the season. Fans will purchase them as memorabilia. They will be sold at the game, as well as for a short time before and after the event in stores. Such efforts in advertising will drive customers to their local stores, where they will be met with phase two of this plan, a personalized experience. As mentioned earlier, despite the decline in recent years at big box bookstores, independent bookstores have been thriving due to the personal nature of the shopping experience. In line with this, Barnes & Noble will devote a section of existing stores to books curated by the manager and staff at that location. Managers will be given the freedom to run the section as they see fit with an earmarked advertising and operations budget with their bonus tied at least in part to the section's performance. For example, a manager can choose to feature books by local authors for a quarter supplementing the corner with book signings and other events related to their curation. In addition, not just for this section, but for the entire store, staff will be more proactive about approaching and helping customers with the goal of hand selling or personally recommending a book to a customer. Similar to employees at Apple stores, Barnes & Noble employees must genuinely love to read and be able to verbalize that to customers. In-store events like book signings and book club meetings reimagine the location not just as a store, but as a community gathering place. 
Such events will be advertised via email, newspaper, in-store signage, as well as with local media outlets like newspapers. Strategies for retention include personalizing the membership program, such as offering exclusive benefits tied to customers' local store, like early access to book signings and other events, as well as receiving a free book on their birthday. Also, a photo sweepstakes event will be held in which visitors can be entered into a drawing for a chance to win a prize if they post to social media a photo of themselves at Barnes & Noble. This plan will begin with a pilot phase in which pop-up kiosks will be implemented at first in just three major cities, plus national events. Also, the curation slash events pilot will begin with five locations, selected via competition with staff at stores pitching ideas for curation. Based on the results of these campaigns, further rollouts can be executed on a geographic basis if deemed profitable after analysis. However, all locations will take immediate action to train employees to be more proactive on the floor with customers. I believe these measures will greatly help Barnes & Noble change book buying from an impersonal affair to a very meaningful experience, which will directly translate to greater sales for the firm. Thank you for listening.